since, believe it or not, before we took over here, this was the ESP power <laughs> station. <laughs> and I thought maybe you'd think that we were, had no lights, as indeed when I've been in Kerry recently down in Kilredig, my God, my shed went up the mountain, uh, half of the roofs from Kilredig disappeared over a bonus head, and we had no lights for, I'd say, nearly two or three weeks down there. So we're quite used now to, um, you know, sort of living in the dark. And uh, before I introduce um, this wonderful man, Mr. Joe Duffy, who so kindly agreed to open John's show, um, I want to mention that Glenn Hansard has sent you a message from Australia and said he was very sorry not to be here. Brian McGuire, of course, was going to say wonderful things about you and then was called to jury service, but not jury service like you would think in, um, you know, the big cases, GOS or the whole lot of things. But actually on the Arts Council, he's just been appointed a uh, board member of the Arts Council. So he very kindly came in today and he did a conversation here, if you'd like to read it. And it's very illuminating, I have to say. Um, it's on the back of the price list. And so um, I think these paintings are wonderful, truly wonderful, and my eye on one or two. And some of them very reasonable as well. But may I actually introduce Mr. Joe Joffey here. Um, nobody, I'm sure, in the country doesn't know who Joe Joffey is. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Noel. First of all, it's great to be here. When I came in in total darkness, I did suspect that the place was owned by the ESB. But then Noel told me, in fact, it's now owned by NAM, so we're lucky we're to get some light. Anyway, um, First of all, the connection between myself and Jay Duffy, this Jay Duffy, and on my birth cert, John, is John Joseph Duffy. So we, we have, we, there's no blood relationship, <laughs> as far as we know. Um, my connection is that, um, first of all, then, then, I, I think given your, given your craft and given your skill and given your ability, you will get bigger and bigger and bigger in terms of uh, renown. But don't ever, ever, ever do what I did, and that was lose the run of myself. You know? <laughs> um, I was in a shop recently and uh, I was up at the counter paying for something which in itself was unusual. Um, <laughs> but I was paying for that and I saw this man, uh, this woman, Nudge, uh, obviously her husband, uh, they were, she was pointing out to me and, and uh, eventually she nudged again. Eventually the man came up to me and he says, listen, I just have to settle this with my wife. Are you Joe Duffy? <laughs> right? And my mother, as always, still alive, up in Bally Farm at 84. You're, you're, never, you're never worse than anyone else, and you're never better than anyone else, and never lose the run of yourself. So I'm standing there, and I said, well, you know, I said, go on, you are the Joe Duffy, aren't you? And I said, well, you know, to my mother, I'm the Joe Duffy. No, tell me the truth, you are. I said, okay, I am the Joe Duffy. And he shouts over to his wife, not a word about Bridie, I told you, he's the Joe Duffy that owns the BMW. <laughs> Never <laughs> my, my connection uh, with John is through his mother-in-law, and uh, Karen is here, uh, is John's wife, and I remember I was first involved and met Vicky McElligot, the legend that is Vicky McElligot, in 1976, and uh, it was the year Elvis died. Is Elvis still there? Yeah. Yeah. 1976. Yeah. We have an alibi, we said Vicky were one <laughs> The summer project in Bally I think Karen was about what age were you, Karen? Uh, One. Yeah, exactly. One. Yeah. <laughs> Karen was Karen, then we met again when I became a social worker and I would always call up to Vicky for guidance and wisdom. She's such a formidable one, but one of the great things we did when we were running the summer projects in Bally was uh, Vicky is indefatigable as they say. She's unstoppable, she is uh, a, a tonic, she's full of wisdom, but she will take she takes no prisoners. And um, we used to, summer pride used to bring the kids off to Port Marnock and Dolly Mountain, the, the zoo as we call it. One day we had one bus we used to hire 
every day. I think it was a 59-seater. Now, I hope there's no one from heaven to say <laughs> one, one day, one Wednesday during the summer in 1976, right, we were organizing a trip to the zoo. It was five pence each. And this slew of kids, like it was unbelievable the number of kids that turned up at the prefab, as we called it, Batty Vaughan. And we said, everyone on the bus, they got on the bus, right? There was 149 on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> this is true, so, and they were all four and five to a seat, and we were singing the wheels on the bus, going deeper and deeper into the ground as we get them. And we got to the zoo, right? And I said, Vicky, we don't have enough money to pay into the zoo. And it was the old entrance, do you remember the old entrance to the yeah. zoo? Detached cottage, right? No. So Vicky stands at the top of the bus and said, right, boys and girls, right? We've, we're, we're going to organize the pay for you. When you get off the bus, you just go straight into the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> they got off the bus, led by Vicky. I'm, I was very innocent, very innocent. And 149 got into the zoo. But that was, that was um, and we brought, I think, luckily we did bring 149 of them home as well, plus a, plus a penguin, plus a mere cat. Um, but it, it, was, it was a great, great day. And, but Vicky, and this, this is in John's work as well, and uh, indeed, the people that uh, have championed John over the years, be it Noel or be it Brian McGuire, the interest in the disenfranchised and marginalised uh, in, in society, Vicky had, had that interest in her DNA, and I'm glad to see it's extending to, to, uh, throughout her family. Um, and then I, I know as well, I'm, I'm thinking of this part of the city, but I know Kind of the mirror square from here across the Liffey is Mountjoy Square, mm -hmm. and again, it's full of organisations like uh, the Dublin Adult Literacy Centre. Now, Emer Costa was here, as, uh, e uh, MEP Emer is here, has a great interest in the Dublin Adult Literacy Centre and working with the marginalised. And I just uh, have always thought, and in fact, as we were growing up in Ballyferman, there was no art, unfortunately, but we did have, and which Dublin still has, and for me it was coming in on a Sunday afternoon to the National Art Gallery in Merrion Square. It was free, it was brilliant, it was space, it was colour, it was a bit of fun, a bit of crack. And for John, I know, he went to school in Colossia, whereas so he had that connection with the U Lane Gallery. And um, he went in there on a regular basis uh, coming out of school, and because he is so much younger than me, people think, as I say, we're not related though. Some people have already accused me of being his father. <laughs> which, which is a bit of an insult given that I've been about four years, four years older than John. But the thing is that John took it as an insult. <laughs> uh, but anyway, he used to go into the U Lane Gallery, and one of the fantastic things in the U Lane Gallery has been the Francis Bacon yeah. Yeah. student. He was deeply influenced by that. But what he loved most, and I think what, what boys love most about the Francis Bacon is just a complete mayhem mm -hmm. of Bacon's studio. And that's the brilliance of what uh, Patricia Dawson and they all did in the U Lane, that they actually took a tube for tube, sheet for sheet, canvas for <coughs> canvas, um, rolled canvas for rolled canvas, paintbrush by paintbrush, paintbrush tin by paint, and just completely uh, diligently uh, reconstructed that studio. And John tells me what he's tried to do at the back of his house now in Poplar Tree, in his <laughs> major studio, is actually have his studio in the mirror image. And it is. <laughs> and Karen's having it. And it is. He's, <laughs> <brilliant. laughs> he's done absolutely <laughs> see yeah. The walls are multicolored. <laughs> <laughs> can. Now, part of this is to try and keep the kids out of the place because yeah. I do a little bit of um, amateur painting myself, and it's, oh. it's, it's, it's hard stairs, and it's not even, <laughs> it's not even hard stairs. My wife wishes it was hard stairs, and handy, but it's just amateur stuff. If you look closely at my, my work, you can still see the numbers behind the colours. <laughs> but um, I just know I, can, I could never do any of it at home because of oils and kids and wrecking the place and the smell of the white spirits. But uh, John knows when he steps into that studio at the back of his garden, at the back of his house and his garden, it is stepping into another world where he's obviously found great comfort. Uh, and I, I know that one of the things he, he's uh, spoken about and written about before is the death yeah. of, of their boy Sean in 2001, wasn't it, Karen? Yeah. And um, that was obviously, and still is, an unending uh, daily remembrance uh, for, for your whole family. Yeah. I know you have a brilliant family, and Vicky has spoken about it. 
uh, before. But I think these colours, look at the light now, look around you, look at the colours. This is, if ever, if ever what happens on December 21st, the, that the winter solstice as we yeah. call it, that morning, that beautiful, beautiful morning, when it's a cloudless day, hopefully over Newgrange, and the sun at around, what, 20 past 8 or whatever, catches the lintel and comes through, and those who have been, I haven't, but those who have been lucky enough to be in, be in that, be a new range when that happens, say that the feeling is nothing short of magical. Absolutely nothing short of magical. And it's the beginning of the new year, the beginning of light uh, subsuming darkness. And I think, just looking around here, that this is another step forward. You have three children as well, but it's another step forward in your process of yeah. not coming to terms, because you never come to terms, yeah. which is theft. But understanding and framing what happened yeah. to, to the two of you and your family uh, when your little boy was taken when he was four four years of age so i think the color is so vibrant and this is the great thing about john's work the color is so vibrant the uh, shapes are look at the, the the shapes are brilliant look at the piece behind me i can see new grange and that i can see i can see new grange and that and um John, as well, I suspect when he was younger, as I was, you, when you were looking at modern art, you were told, you you were saying, "What is this?" Yeah, and you right. you found a meaning in it, and if you find a meaning in it, mm -hmm. and if it touches you, well, then yeah. you're off. And to have that confidence, yeah. which I know through Noel and Brian and other people that have stood by you and, and pushed you to have that confidence is a brilliant, mm -hmm. uh, brilliant attribute. Um, now the other thing, myself and John have a common is we've got me legs. <laughs> I don't know whether you see you've seen him walking, but he's uh, doing that stitches. He is actually um this is beginning to sound like life. <laughs> he was knocked off his bike. John, tell us what happened. <laughs> Go ahead, you were cycling up no. to the road. Talk to Joe. Talk to Joe. Not easy to No, it has never got over us. It was walks and a hard one. <laughs> I'm surprised when you moved your gallery a few months ago. You didn't move it down to Bleeding Dawson Street. <laughs> Once again, right at the heart of the Lewis Walks that, that be dead with you for so many, so many years. So in, in formally opening the art exhibition, I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that the artist is in pain. <laughs> and that should encourage people, <laughs> encourage people that there are enough paintings here uh, between one for every, each. there's neither one for everyone in the audience, yeah. <laughs> and there's, um, there's a few drinks here as well, and there's one for everyone in the audience. Yeah. So on your behalf, I want to congratulate John and Karen. I want to uh, endorse the work and the support that um, Noelle has given to so many artists, and she's so yeah. open yeah. and so yeah. inclusive, as we know. She's no agenda, it's just to encourage art and creativity and space for people who are of that. Uh, wonderful, wonderful uh, disposition, which is such a great, a great part of our world, a great part of our city. We're in a great part of the city where Jack B. Yates, as you know, lived at the top for a while. Francis Bacon was born around the corner. Harry Cairnoff used to go up and down those streets. We have the National Gallery, we have the RHA, we have all the uh, galleries here and down around Molesworth Street and further down. So it's a great, great part of a great, great city, and uh, I'm glad to see, especially in the last month where Pat, both Patrick Scott and today, well yesterday Barry Cook died, um, that we have, and they would be proud I'm sure, to see the tradition, the great tradition of colour and uh, strength and vibrancy and that uh, life that is beaming out of uh, John Duffy's uh, paintings. So John, long may you shine, long may you glow. Um, let's go. Let's hope your knee, your knee fully, fully, seriously fully recovers and that you get more and more time as you go through your life to uh, spend 
in that uh, Francis Bacon like Francis Bacon like studio at the bottom of your garden. Yeah. I give you I give you John Duffy art. <laughs> Thanks first and foremost, yeah, to Joe, who... Uh, you can call me John. <laughs> okay. yeah. um, for, for those brilliant words. Um, it, it, it seems a bit of a, you know, things happen. Uh, timing is amazing in life. Um, I was only talking to, to James about how timing can be really important. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's hard to, to quantify, it's hard to, you know, to say how that works. But um, from what I would have thought was a, was, was a small, innocuous meeting uh, with Noel, um, not, not, not two months ago, um, this show just boom, you know? If you put the, if you put the hammer on, you said, right? I, I said, you don't paint with your knee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, I want to thank Noel for, for you know, seeing, seeing, um, seeing what she sees in the work and, and, and having the confidence then to, to say to me, wait, I want you to, to put on a show here. And that, you know, I got a flash uh, not too long ago. I showed with the Blue Leaf Gallery for some years and I have to thank them as well for all the support over the years. Um, they, had a, they had a gallery up in Pembroke Street and, and I was in there years ago with like a few photographs and a few paintings under my arms. and. Uh, I got a flash there yesterday of I'm now hanging a show here just to, just up the road from it and when I wanted to be an artist all I wanted to do was to know what it was like to be in a studio and what was a studio like you know as a kid growing up um, but also to, to what is it like to have an exhibition you know to exhibit your work um, and it, it kind of it really feels important this show because it's uh, you know it's 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 in a place that, that um, I think you know gives it gives it a great platform for the work. Respect. And, mm -hmm. and I have to thank you for that. A big thanks for, as well. I uh, thank Karen because she's the rock that keeps me. Yeah, yeah, I am. Let's <laughs> me do the stuff. And I thank Sean and I thank Daniel and I thank uh, Aaron and Jack. You know they're yeah. they're 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 everything to me. But I just like to I hope they like the work and I and. Now that it's in full glory, you know, <laughs> then you can you can take it all in. But thank you very much. Thank you.